even in my uh, industry, they try to uh, stimulate innovation in uh, both hardware and software. So I think it's a pragmatism on the Chinese government's point of view. Get the employment going, get the economy going. When you see have more money, you get the people educated and start looking at software. So I'm very confident they're going to catch up to India sometime down the road. I'll just point out that the top 10 IT companies in China is surely twice more valuable than the top 10 IT companies in India in aggregate. Maybe not top one to top one, but if you list all the internet, software, um, IT, and um, uh, gaming companies, uh, there are many very successful companies. So I would argue it's already happening. China, in terms of IT innovation, is exceeding that of India. Surely, with, our out, you know, with outsourcing process and that kind of thing, there's still more it's more behind, but... Is that high tech? Uh, IT? No, I mean, In, outsource, <laughs> outsourcing that kind of thing. Is that really high tech? That's a fair question. I, I do think there is a possibility of learning the know-how and then turning a software business into it. We have yet to see that in India, and China's farther away, but I think it's kind of a blessing. China didn't jump on the outsourcing bandwagon and has now developed its own IT. Yeah, but I, I agree with Kai. I think it's a, a you know, common misperception that China the software industry, IT, is behind the India. Maybe that was true you know, 10 years ago, maybe that was true five years ago. But right now, if you look at uh, just the overall uh, you know, the industry, the landscape, uh, I, I would say China is probably more advanced uh, in terms of innovation, you know, IP, uh, and uh, the, the overall infrastructure. Right? And in certain areas, China is probably behind you know, the uh, outsourcing some of the business software. But in communication software, embedded software, China is uh, probably way, be way, way ahead. Um, having said that, there's, uh, you know, China obviously made a tremendous uh, stride in IPR protection. But there's still a lot of room for improvement. And I, I often, uh, in China, I talk about my, one of my equations, which is IT equals IQ plus IP. Okay, so IT basically has two major components, the talents, uh, and also the creation and the protection of, uh, of intellectual property. Uh, and, and I think in the last few years, uh, the Chinese government you know, recognizes and understands uh, protection of IP is not only good for multinationals, it is in China's best interest to really develop its own industry, whether it's a software or pharmaceutical. Uh, and so right now there are you know, lots of uh, not only um, uh, uh, policies or laws in place, but also enforcement is becoming much, much stronger. So I'm very optimistic, but having said that, there is uh, indeed a lot of, uh, uh, lot of room for, for perfection. I would weave in a lot of these questions from the floor. If there's more, please uh, hand it to the uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, walking around. Uh, I fully agree with Mei Wei that uh, you know, it is much more pragmatic to spend time on uh, and the money in the short term in order to stimulate the economy right now uh, to do the hardware rather than the software and hence Yachin. And basic research is important, no doubt, but then it's not going to create the results such as job creation, uh, which is, by the way, is not the 8% uh, or they about growth that the Chinese need. They don't give a damn about 8%. If it is 5%, but if they can create enough jobs, it's really job creation uh, and, and not the 8% or 7% or 9%. So, 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 so I think that uh, that's one point to bear in mind. Another one, I want to ask the three gentlemen uh, on the high-tech side of things. Uh, obviously, China doesn't have a Bangalore, but on the other hand, you go to Shanghai, you go to Beijing, these are very, very vibrant uh, high-tech uh, centers uh, of the country, as well as some pockets elsewhere, uh, be it Zhejiang University and, and, and elsewhere. Uh, but do you see that any in, 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 in the next five to 10 years, will there be some high-tech business, some area uh, that will become so big and, and be able to make a really an impact on the overall economy in the short term or in the long term? And if there's such a thing, what do you think they will be? Will they be in pharmaceutical, will be in, 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 the, in the internet, or what will they be? Where's the future? That will really make it big. Well, let me, let me yeah, just uh, uh, start. Yeah. There, there are a number of areas, obviously, uh, but you know, I, I personally, in the IT area, and I see a, a convergence of uh, you know, PC, internet, uh, and, and the wireless communications. So it's a new industry emerging, which really leverage 
the power of those three different industries. It's uh, the power of computing and PC, the power of uh, connectivity and internet, and the power of uh, mobility in, in wireless. Uh, and, and actually, if you look at the, some of uh, the new you know, the products, whether it's a network, a smartphones, I really you know, leverage the critical uh, power of this, uh, this new industry. And I think uh, life science, uh, pharmaceutical is one of uh, uh, the, you know, a lot of new investment, you know, whether it's a VC or, or government investment goes into those, that area. Alternative energy is huge. You know, a friend of mine is running this company, the SunTech, uh, and I, I think that's, uh, you know, it's not only a social issue, but also a huge opportunity, business opportunity. Um, and obviously, in the area of, uh, uh, you know, in the rural uh, areas, in, in, in the range from uh, an IT to uh, you know, farm mechanics, uh, I think there's, uh, if, you, if you look at the growth, that's where we'll come from, you know, health, you know, health care and ed education. I think all this is going to become you know, huge opportunities for China. Kaifu, Jeffrey, you agree? Thoughts? Yeah, I, 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 as I said earlier, the cycle for biotech or pharmaceutical research is, is very long. Uh, but in healthcare uh, area, I do see their potential that, uh, uh, that, that things will make a big impact on the economy. First of all, healthcare today is identified as one area that can help bring the economy or oh, increase the growth and bring the economy out of this uh, slow growth. Uh, and that's actually one of uh, the area government is investing a lot of money and we're beneficiary of that. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we had our first quarter ever in the last several years, 40% growth because of this increasing, in China, right? in, China in China in particular, uh, increasing investment in healthcare uh, and uh, you know, it's uh, certainly, you know, it's creating jobs. We're adding 20% more people. So, so healthcare uh, as an industry will definitely have a, a big potential to uh, have a big impact on the, on the economy. Uh, that's probably the case going forward. I think it will continue to become a, a bigger and bigger part of uh, the economy. Uh, in terms of area of research, in life science that will be possibly making an impact. Uh, the one area I can think of uh, will be probably vaccines. Vaccines. Uh, I, I do see that China has very good basic vaccines industry. Uh, and if you look at today the research in avian flu, swan flu, and uh, everyone is kind of at the same starting line. So there's a possibility that, that Chinese scientists could be able to come up with uh, some uh, good magazines which can make an impact both on China and globally. But having said that, uh, that there's so much uncertainty with uh, life science research that we've been anticipating blockbusters and drugs uh, coming through the pipeline, but we haven't seen many actually over the last 10 years or so, and which really caused this uh, reduction of productivity in R&D of uh, life science. But we're hopeful that uh, something will come through that uh, will make a big impact. Okay. okay, I'll just pick two. I agree all, with all the things Jeffrey and Yachin said. One is the, the mobile internet. Uh, of course, the internet already has over 300 million users in China, largest country. And then this year, the mobile internet will begin to really take off. Uh, 3G used to be a mess, very chaotic, competing standards, but this year it's really everywhere. Uh, in every city I've been to, 3G works perfectly. And on top of that, um, there, there's now competition. The three companies are, are competing on price, on features, on capabilities. I think really creating a health, uh, ecosystem, healthier competition, com competitive ecosystem. So with all that, plus the 600 million phones, I think it's inevitable that users will find a lot of uh, great things to do on the internet, not just from the PC, but from mobile. So I think that's, in that, that's definitely going to be big. Uh, the other one I already alluded to earlier is e-commerce. I mean, if there's already so much cleverness with the Alibaba exports, with the Taobao uh, doing the internal eBay-like um, 
auctioning systems with the bicycle delivery of books to your home in one day, you know, the cash on delivery. People are getting around the fact that credit cards are not, all, are not very popular. But imagine once credit cards become popular, people begin to place more faith on buying online. I think that opportunity is going to be huge. Do you really, does China really need high tech, high tech? <laughs> I mean, uh, there's only a few countries in the whole wide world that really comes up with those stuff. Yeah. Can China just take them, uh, modify them, like?